Okay, practice consolidation section. Let's support this poem. Mm -hmm. Shall we? Shall we? Let's bring the bishop here. It's a move order thing, is this type of opening. So we'll grab here. It's very rare I see them take him with the knight. They always seem to take with the bishop here. So we just come back and grab. And then after that, it's just a case of doing your own thing there. Huh? So yes, being your own thing, being your own original self, playing the games um, makes you a little bit happy. Ooh, so is there a plus situation here? It's a shame his knight's there. Mm hmm. Let's just grab it. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Just seeing if there's any dirty tricks there. Good night. Going there. It's not going to do much, is it? Let's just grab it. Yeah, damn. <laughs> okay, so our bishop doesn't have any protection on it. So we'd probably need to bring the knight back here to give protection for a brief moment. This pawn is going to go. Unless, of course, we bring that. Or the knight, like I say, some dirty trick with the check here. Knight, check, pawn takes. But there's nothing behind it. Bishop could come and protect. But then he's got a two on one with the rook and the bishop. So I'm going to have to resign myself to basically losing a pawn. I'm happy with that. Let's go with it. So that works out okay for me. And um, we covered, oh, because we covered greedy munching in the first consolidation exercise. And it, if it's not going to put you in a good position, really try and avoid greedy munching. Not sure if the opponent actually saw the pawn or not. So I'm going to bring the rook up. This knight's got a two on one. He's not seeing these things, but um, maybe he's building up. So this knight had a two on one here on this pawn. So if we bring the pawn here, then he pushes down, then his knight takes. Yes, yeah, so there's a clever little build-up of something going on here. So I think if we try and circumvent it by attacking the bishop, then we take a bit of pressure away from this pawn. Our knight is protecting our rook, so if we take this bishop for free, then the rook is safe and why it's resigned. So that was a case of probably being over too stylistic because they did have the opportunity to greedy munch the pawn at this stage here. And like we were saying, if you're greedy munching, it doesn't always improve your position anyway. So we were ready for all that because um, we was fairly happy with the position I was going to be in. But then the pawn pushing down, that's, another one where basically the knight the knight could have moved here for a two on one on the pawn i wouldn't have classed that as a greedy munch per se because it's them working pieces together in a sense it's when single pieces go chasing a, a, a pawn that's where you have a bit of an issue but i think that would have been better but anyway that didn't happen so we brought our rook up and then obviously we have that opportunity to attack the bishop. Yeah, I think in real terms, the bishop probably just needed to take the bishop because it's got no support behind it. If it was going to do something like that, or even in a desperado, just bringing the knight here, supporting the bishop, something supporting that bishop. But that move that they made was not, um, <clears throat> that wasn't dealing with the critical aspect of what was going on the, on the board. So we've got a free bishop, and because our knight is protecting our rook, we could safely take. So that's consolidation. Again, it's always down to what the opponent does. So if you're playing somebody high level, then they're going to take advantage of the, the weak areas. Um, 
and they may do a lot more greedy munching <laughs> so that's why I like to take pieces off the board especially if I'm playing a higher rated player I like to take pieces off the board strategically so that then they don't have much pieces to play with and it does shock people and it does work and it sounds so basic but it is so true and no matter who I'm playing against I've played very high level players and um, it, the system does work it does get that shock factor and when you're then down to like um, a few pawns each that scares the living daylights out of them because they're a high rated player how can a low rated player get me down to a few pawns each so that's another strategy in psychology that um, really does stand you in good stead um, most high rated players want to clean you off the board straight away they don't want to contest with you they want to say basically well you won't last too long with me so if you can last that little bit longer with the higher rated players each time you're playing them and improving the quality of your game as you're playing them yes you might take a lot of losses but just a bit at a time improve the way that you're losing then you'll come to a stage where you'll you'll realize i'm playing my own game i'm playing an individual game i'm not playing um an historical game i'm not following a sicilian a sicilian that the person who played the sicilian didn't call the sicilian they were playing their game so really get to the bottom of who you are when you're playing chess and bring your own personality into the game not the history of a grandmaster or what your coach has told you you should play um, it's got to be you when you're getting coached you still have to put your flavor in it uh, it's really hard I think coaching chess because at the end of the day you have to put yourself into the game when you're playing the opponent if you're then going to go well i'm going to do the sicilian and the night off because my coach has told me to follow these lines and the expectation is that the opposing person is going to do this move that move the other and then you go in there and you play somebody like me who doesn't do anything that you expect to be done then you have to start playing as yourself but if you're not trained to play as yourself then you're going to come a cropper and that's where the advantages will be disappearing so I think start playing for yourself as yourself right from the very beginning when you're learning chess then it'll stand you in good stead for when the original originality comes into play when you're playing the higher rated players okay let's just uh, have a game this pawn here I'm going to use the arrows in this one and as always I'm going to mention I'm not using the arrows it's not cheating it's uh, just identifying areas that potentially can be attacked etc the thought processes that we're going through so that's all they're being used for it's going to bring the bishop here maintaining pressure onto this weak pawn and so while well, we've castled and everything crikey um so <laughs> we got there quick i'm going to press onto this bishop here the if the pawn takes knight takes it's very rare the bishop takes the knight everybody's really quite snobby about that they don't seem to they'll just leave the bishop there which is really weird but anyway they, they treasure let's go here with the rook can probably expect this type of situation or maybe even the, the soft pawn so this is just a knockabout just throwing moves out this is why I'm using the arrows just to um, show what I'm sort of thinking type thing let's go there maybe so they've got a bit of a flap about this bishop but now he's defending but defending with the queen interesting oh but the bishop can move then but then the rook is going to be on the queen oh hold on a minute his bishop can take the pawn here he's on my queen but then i've got to check on his king if i take with the rook so okay that works out i think he may still come down with this knight can take the knight can take
maybe the bishop decides to take after all. There's a lot going on, or he might just not ignore it all, bring the knight out, attack in the knight, something, just throw caution to the wind. So if the pawn pushes there, the bishop can take because the bishop, well, oh, what's going on, what's going on? So he's resigned himself to the fact that it's going to get checked on here and get loses queen. So we might see a resignation there. Well, that seemed to come round dead quick. Crikey. Weren't even looking for anything either. It just seemed to come around dead quick. So we were talking about they don't usually take the um, knight with the bishop here. And then this bishop takes this pawn. But it's in front of the king. So you have to be a bit careful about taking stuff that lines you in front of the king. If it's not fully supported. So we're lucky that we have the queen supporting our rook on this side as well. Then they brought the queen through. And these nice little touches here, always nice to have a pawn at the side of the thing that is blocking the king. Because then you can just put it there, a smaller piece attacking a higher piece can't be wrong. So then obviously we've got the check and then... Okay, continuing the consolidation theme nice and steady we know all the concepts now that we're working on so we're not looking to add any more into it it's now about putting it all together and seeing if we can consistently provide a half decent performance for ourselves let's put a check on the king knowing full well the pawn probably drops just bring the bishop here now You start developing your own little quirky ways of doing things things that other people will probably say whoa no you definitely don't want to do that queen captures here but it is all about is trying to make you an individual chess player not somebody that who gets coached by somebody who wants you to play like them or wants you to play like um, uh, one of the old time players and that's not the idea the idea is to be free and original with your own play so attacking the bishop um this what's the story let's put a check on the king here let's grab and we get the 20 pointer so he can't go and castle that's an interesting situation to be in pawn's got no protection on all simple stuff develops the knight out as well not forgetting about attacking the weak areas you know that type of thing and what your pieces actually control the spaces the pieces that it's um, managing okay so let's take so his knight then comes on to his pawn comes on to us put a check on the king here bishops defending that's an interesting one let's attack the pawn Let's grab the pawn, it's got no protection on. Got a two on one now on the bishop. King's gonna move to the side. It's not moving to the side, so we'll go with the rook. So we actually win a minor piece for free in that situation. And we can, is it being fancy? Uh, da, 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 da. It's, I don't think it's being fancy, no. So if his rook takes, bishop takes with a check and we get the knight as well. Oh dear, so we get the knight as well, but his king can move to the side. Okay, let's take the knight anyway because we're up material. And ownership of files, keep it simple with the rook. Bit of flight square for the king supporting the knight at the same time it's going for the exchange let's go for that because we are up a piece let's get the king centralized well they've gone for a long pause so they might reside here no they're not okay so let's get mobilized knight attacking the pawn 
don't want to go too high up because it can get trapped by the king so always be mindful of that and let's grab oops let's grab this pawn with a check and put another check now this is where in my rookie days probably I would have gone here thinking I'm into some probably still is safe because it can come around here but it's like it's not really targeting anything per se so just bringing it back down now let's get the king up let's try to support these pawns coming up here let's get it up and his king's right over the far side as well so we could actually look to go and get these pawns have to be very careful his king da, 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 it's going to take a while coming down isn't he what shall we do let's push this pawn protecting the knight his king wants to come down for our pawns so it's one let's do a count one two three four five six six one two three four five fat hold on one two three four and then five six okay I think that count should work for us he's actually coming with the pawn so that slows his count down a bit yeah so there's no major damage you can do to us now based on the count that we did the most devastation would have been with this king coming down and attacking so we'll get a promotion uh, we can go this way yeah it's too late now for the king doing that dance so let's go here like they may have left the game the signal seems to have gone yes countdown seven six five four three two one uh, one of the key things that I need to highlight is I don't win all my games and um, the ones I'm showing here are the ones where I'm you know I'm doing them for the exercises so I'm getting lucky or whatever it is luck is on my side when I'm doing these demonstrations and when I'm not recording I do lose some of the games as well so uh, you know not many nowadays which is good but like I say I'm not a genius I'm not a somebody who can't lose so I don't want to give that impression that oh my god this guy's always winning uh, no I'm not when I'm recording um, unfortunately I, I am actually winning so <laughs> which is a good thing this is a good thing because it's good for the good for the the concepts but, uh, but just bear in mind, I don't win all the time.